Welcome back. So millennials are on pace to become the world's largest generation, but they are already the leading victims of scams. The Federal Trade Commission finding 40% of the 20 to 29 year old Americans reported financial fraud last year, more than double the next group on the list. Joining us right now to talk more about that, the best selling author of Retire Inspired, Ramsey Solutions financial expert Chris Hogan. Chris, good to see you. Good to be with you. It was a surprise because we thought the younger generation uh, was going to be smarter than their grandparents in terms of spotting a fraud. Well, I think, Maria, as we start to look at this, the, the millennials have grown up online. You can call them digital natives. They're used to sharing information and doing everything online. So it's going to make them more susceptible to fraud and to scams. So they really have to begin to be aware and educate themselves. Hi, Chris. I'm a millennial. My name is Kristen. This actually, Hi, Kristen. Doesn't, <laughs> this actually does not surprise me at all because millennials are much more active online and on social media than their parents who might just use the computer to check their email. Or Facebook. Right, or Facebook. The internet is, you know, the wild west for scammers who might take advantage of millennials who are more likely to give over personal information in, in online profiles. So do you think that um, this could have something to do with usage rates among different uh, generations. Oh, I absolutely agree with you. It is about usage, but I think there are some things millennials can do to protect themselves. Uh, for example, being aware of the secured networks when you're accessing any kind of banking information, uh, using online payment methods that have limited funds inside of them so they don't have access to your entire checking account. There are some little checkpoints you can do. We have to be aware, uh, but you're absolutely right. Millennials are using the internet much more for many more things, so the odds are they're going to have many more or issues with scams and imposters. Yeah, it's, I, mean, I agree. I think Kristen this is, is exactly right. This is Connor right. McShane. What? Not a millennial. No, not a I'm millennial. I'm not. I'm a, I'm a Gen Xer. <laughs> I know. I feel, laugh, old this, feel old in this. <laughs> all of a sudden in this crowd. And I think Kristen's exactly right that this is probably just a numbers uh, game. But there, there is. Pro there is something, though, to a younger generation being more trusting for whatever reason. I mean, that they're more likely than the rest of us to click on something, aren't they? Uh, Especially yeah. since the, re the most common reported types of financial fraud are debt collections, identity theft, and right. imposter schemes. It's kind of, well, I wonder why that is, Chris. Yeah, I, it is about trust, and they are actually sharing more information online than any other generation. But as you start to look at these three, these three big ones, debt collections, this is where you start to get phone calls about old accounts you may have had or accounts you never, ever had. And they can be smaller amounts where people just agree to pay 50 to to $100 just to make the calls go away. So I would encourage people, if you start to get phone calls out of the blue, ask for debt verification to really understand who you're dealing with. Identity theft is where someone has has accessed your information, your social security number, your cell phone number, something along those lines. Don't turn a blind eye to it. As you're starting to get phone calls from strange zip codes and things of that nature, call, pick up the phone, answer, and do some research. Now, the imposter scams, this is the biggest one. Uh, consumers lost $328 million more million on this one than anything else. This is where someone pretends to be a government aid official, or they pretend to be a, a loved one that's in trouble or stranded, or pretend pretending to be anyone else. We yeah. have to be crystal clear on who you're dealing with and don't ever send money to a company or an individual that you don't know or trust. Yeah, we've all gotten that letter. I'm stranded, I need money, send it to this. Uh, yes. uh, I, I've gotten that. You've gotten that letter? Oh, I kept like 10 emails like that a Me day. too. Yeah, it's true. Chris, yeah. thank you very much. Great to see you, sir. Thank you. Chris Hogan.